Hey everybody! So, we're going to be talking about exposure blending for exterior images, but I'm going to throw in something a little bit nifty for you. We are going to be exposure blending when we have moving objects. So, in this example, we have these trees and these waves. So, let's go ahead and look at the exposures. I have two exposures here and they are the dark exposure and a bright exposure. Now if we took these both into Photoshop just the way they are and tried to blend them, they wouldn't blend well at all. They would, they would just be terrible. So we need to go into Photoshop as smart objects. So before we do that, I'm going to change something. I'm gonna remove all the sharpening and I'm going to enable profile corrections and remove chromatic aberration. And I'm gonna go way back up. I don't know why my thing's inverted. Anyway, so we need to take these into Photoshop. So let's right click, edit, open as smart objects. So these are gonna open up in two different documents. Uh, what you can do is easily just drag and drop one image to another document or to, this, to one image to another image's document or you can do it the way I like to do it, which is pre-blend in Lumenzia, and I like to check check alignment. And we can go ahead and just blend the documents. So this is gonna blend both documents into one single document for the blending process. And you can see it's blended uh, one of the exposures into difference. So let's go ahead and close those uh, original exposures. And, I, and the reason I put this into difference is because I need to check to see if these are aligned properly. And I don't think they are. They're very close, but you can see like this white edge right here and right here, it's just a little bit off. So let's go ahead and go Control T, and we're gonna use the arrow keys to nudge this over. And I'm gonna bring it up, maybe. No, about right there. So I'm gonna hit Enter, and now it should be perfectly aligned. Let's go ahead and take a, take a look over here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now we can go ahead and take this out of difference and we're going to put the base exposure on t uh, on the bottom and the brighter or not sorry we're going to we're going to put the bright exposure on the bottom and the dark exposure on top so from top to bottom we are dark and then bright next we're going to put a black mask on the dark exposure by holding down alt and click on mask you can do this the same way by hitting the uh, add mask button and also control alt no no no, not control we need to just hit alt and then add the layer mask okay cool now that we've got that covered now we need to go ahead and make a mask so i'm going to go ahead and make a pretty general mask because i can go in and edit it uh later if need be and we are just going to hit mask and you can do this the same way simply by Inverting the layer mask so it's white, turning off the layer, go to image, apply image, and make sure your layer is merged, your channel is RGB, and your blending mode is multiply. Click OK, and it does the exact same thing. So let's look at this image the way it is right now. You can see that it's blended but it's lost a ton of contrast and these edges just look terrible. So we need to fix that and we can do that by matching the exposures. So let's go ahead and bring the, uh, the brighter exposure up in camera raw. And I simply did that by double clicking on the, uh, the layer. And we need to basically bring the highlights down bring the exposure down and bring the shadows up. So about right there is looking good. So let's go ahead and OK. And that doesn't do much for the overall image because we needed to work we need to work on our dark exposure and basically do the same thing. We need to bring the exposure up this time and bring the shadows up. 
So we're going to bring the highlights down. We're going to bring the shadows all the way up. And we're going to adjust this so it's closely matching the brighter exposure. And as you can see, it's blending in very well. We don't lose any contrast, which looks fantastic. But we still have one issue. These edges don't look very good. As you can see, there's like little indents and divots and little nooks and crannies. This one's not too bad, but it's still it still needs some work. And this one, of course, needs work. So what we can do is on the layer mask, just go to the brush tool. So hit B on the keyboard. And we're going to use the bracket keys to make the, the, the brush size bigger. And I'm going to set my flow to about 4%. And then we're going to paint white. And as you can see, all of that movement from the trees is going away. And the reason why this is going away is because we've matched the exposure so there's both the same brightness. And they're blending in a lot better now. As you can see, this is pretty much the same exposure minus the sky so it's pretty nifty so let's go ahead and just finish that up right there this one as well and I think that looks pretty good and that looks pretty good I'm gonna do a couple more adjustments before I save this because I think we can actually make this look pretty sweet and I'm going to brush over this because it's a moving a little bit yeah okay cool so I'm gonna do a little bit of adjustments in camera raw to the dark exposure and this is why I like bringing in my layers as smart objects because they're they, I, I get all that raw data and they're you know directly editable so what we can do with this is I'm going to bring in a gradient and we're going to hold down shift and start from the top, make a gradient going down to about right there's good. I'm going to bring in the tint of the blue and maybe add a little bit of magenta and the exposure. I'm going to bring the exposure down and I'm going to bring in that saturation. Next, I'm going to bring in more warmth to this sun. So I went and got the radial filter, and I just made a little oval there. And I'm going to go ahead and reset the local correction settings. Next, we can go ahead and bring up the temperature. Maybe that's a bit much. And I think maybe the saturation. So that looks pretty good. And one thing that I forgot to mention is the luminance masking. You can see it's going over the trees. I don't really want that. I just want it to be targeted towards the sun. So hold down Alt and hit the luminance range with the, uh, the sliders. So I think that looks pretty good. So about like 76. And then I want to go back to that gr gradient that I had. Uh, let's see, about right there is my gradient. Okay, range mask, luminance, and I don't want it to be hitting those trees. So about right there. Cool. And I think we can bring up the saturation just a little bit more. Okay, that looks pretty sweet. Go ahead and hit OK. And that's going to, it's going to apply our changes. So that looks really good. I think the foreground is a little bit too saturated like these greens they're they're really green and they're nice and pretty looking but I don't quite like them like that I'm just gonna bring them down just a tidbit maybe even bring down the green luminance that looks pretty good and just like that they are now you know corrected so what else can we do to really make this image pop? I'm not seeing much that we can do other than add a vignette. So let's go ahead and do that. We can do that 
in what do you call it camera raw by just uh, hitting control shift alt e that makes a stamp visible layer and you can just convert that to a smart object go into uh, acr and make your vignette but i prefer to do it in lumenzia since it's quicker so we're going to hit the vignette button and you have two options here single layer mask that makes a layer mask which is editable um, like like as if you were painting it uh, or a vector mask which is as if you were drawing a path with the pen tool I'm gonna go with a single layer mask and that looks pretty good I'm gonna bring this up and then I'm gonna paint over the areas I think that's way too much let's bring that down yeah about 26 maybe 30 back where it was I guess I'm gonna bring in more brightness to this bottom area so I'm gonna paint white I don't want the vignette to affect that area and now you can see the vignette is changing that looks pretty cool everything's looking good next I want to go ahead and sharpen this image with a uh, what is it the sharpening tool in in Lumenzia, but I first need to make a stamp visible layer. Control Shift Alt E, and we're gonna go ahead and hit Sharp. Select Smart Object and Deconvolution, and I'm gonna set this to I'm gonna set this to 60. So deconvolution that's gonna make a pretty big change in the amount of sharpening that's in the image. So you can, as you can see, it's just a really big change. It's nice and sharp, but I think there's a little bit too much noise in the image. So I'm going to open up the camera raw filter on this layer. I'm going to zoom right in, and I'm going to go in with the noise reduction. I'm going to bring the noise reduction, bring in some of the detail, maybe a little bit more noise reduction, bring in some contrast. I think that looks good. Okay, let's hit OK. And that looks a lot better. Okay, that looks really cool. So, if you guys have any comments, questions, uh, concerns, advice, just hit me up in the comment section below or hit me up on Facebook. And yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. So, anyway, take care, guys.